We're in Rosen, Discrete Mathematics and Its Applications, section 4.4 .4 on uh, solving uh, congruences. <clears throat> and here is the uh, summary of the topics in this section. This video will cover only linear congruences. Other videos may cover other areas. What is a linear congruence? Well, the analogy to keep in mind would be a linear equation, such as AX equals B, where A and B are constants and X is a variable. A linear congruence um, is AX is congruent to B mod M, <clears throat> where again, our M is always a, a positive integer. Uh, we have A and B, we deal in the integers for congruences, and X is our variable, as it would be in a linear equation. And then the solutions to the congruence, AX is congruent to B mod M, are all the integers, X, that satisfy the congruence. And notice that we talk about the solutions being plural. All right, um, another definition. If I have an integer a, I say that a bar is its inverse if a bar times a is congruent to 1 mod m. So that is its inverse. The inverse of a is a bar. Let's look at an example. 5 is an inverse of 3 mod 7. Since 5 times 3 is 15, which is congruent to 1 under the modulus of 7. The use of the inverse will be much like the use of the inverse in um, normal equation mathematics. We'll multiply both sides by the inverse in order to get a solution for x. So. Since we can't divide by a in general, but we can always multiply both sides by a bar to solve for x. And uh, regular mathematics, we would multiply both sides by the inverse of a to get the solution. So 1 over a is the inverse of a <clears throat> in regular mathematics. We'll do the same thing in uh, modular arithmetic. We'll multiply both sides by the inverse, but it'll be this a bar. All right, so this uh, theorem guarantees that we have an inverse of a whenever a and m are relatively prime. A in the modulus. And so if A and M are relatively prime, then an inverse of A exists. And it is unique modulo M. In other words, there's only one value between uh, 0 and M minus 1 that is the inverse. And then all other inverses of A will be congruent to that unique inverse that is uh, positive and less than M. And here's the proof. So if we have the greatest common divisor of A and M is 1, I can express 1 as a linear combination of A and M by Bezu's theorem. And then if, they, if this uh, equation is true, I can uh, set them uh, congruent in a modulus uh, with respect to m. And when I do that, I note that I can take the modulus of any term, any factor on either side of the congruence and maintain the congruence. So since, the, since tm is congruent to 0 mod m, I can replace that with a 0 and get SA is congruent to 1 mod M, which means that S is going to be an inverse of A mod M. And there's an, 
additional proof needed to show its uniqueness, which we don't cover in the video. <clears throat> All right, so how do we find inverses? Well, we find inverses by finding bazoo coefficients. So we use the Euclidean algorithm and the bazoo coefficients to give us uh, the inverses. We're going to do two examples, this uh, quick one and then a longer one. Uh, find the inverse of seven, uh, 3 mod 7. Um, well, they are relatively prime, so an inverse exists. And then we can use the Euclidean algorithm to divide 7 by 3 to give quotient 2 and remainder 1. And I put everything in terms of 1 to get a linear combination of 7 and 3 that equals 1. And I get bazoo coefficients of negative 2 for 3 and 1 for 7. And because uh, negative 2 is the bazoo coefficient for 3, it is the inverse of 3 mod 7. Also, every integer that is congruent to negative 2 mod 7 is an inverse of 3 mod 7. And I note that 5 is the unique uh, inverse that is positive and less than 7. But any one of them will work. All right, let's look at another example that's uh, longer. I want to find the inverse of 101 mod 4620. And so we'll need to find the bazoo coefficients for this. But first, we need to uh, use the Euclidean algorithm to show that there is indeed an inverse. And then we'll use all of the steps of the Euclidean algorithm in the second pass to find the bazoo coefficients. So let's um, start the Euclidean algorithm. We have 4620 as the dividend, 101 as the divisor to give us 75 as the remainder. 101 becomes a dividend, 75 becomes the divisor to give us 26 as the remainder. 75 becomes a dividend, 26 the divisor to give us 23 as the remainder. 26 the dividend, 23 divisor to give us 3 as the remainder. 23 is the dividend, 3 is the divisor to give us 2 as a remainder. 3 is the dividend, 2 is the divisor to give us 1 as the remainder. And then we have the stopping uh, condition with the 0 remainder. OK, so we uh, 1 is our last non-zero remainder. That means that. 101 does have an inverse, um, modulus, modulo 4620. And now let's uh, start uh, to do the second pass so we can find the bazoo coefficients. Okay, here we go. Working uh, from uh, the, the line that gives us the last non-zero uh, remainder, we rewrite it to where uh, 1 is on the left of the equals and everything else is on the right. So 1 is equal to 3 uh, minus 1 times 2. And then we will substitute for all of the uh, uh, remainders going all the way back up to the top. So now we're going to substitute for 2. That's 23 minus 7 times 3. And we resolve that to get negative 1 times 23 plus 8 times 3. And now we substitute for 3. Uh, we substitute 26 minus 1 times 23. And resolve to get 8 times 26 minus 9 times 23. Now we substitute for 23. And we substitute 7 minus 2 times 26 for that. Resolve it to get 26 times 26 minus 9 times 75. Notice we're keeping track of the remainders as we go. We're going to substitute for 26, 101 minus 75. And we resolve that to get 26 times 101 minus 35 times 75. Substitute finally for 75, which is 4620 minus 45 times 101. And resolve that to get negative 35 times 4620 plus um, 1601 times 101. 
So our bazooka coefficients are negative 35 for 4620, 1601 for 101, and 1601 will be the inverse of 101 modulo 4620. All right, so next we're going to use a, an inverse to solve a linear congruence. And so if we have a linear congruence and A and M are relatively prime, we can multiply both sides by A bar. Um, and then again, what are the solutions we're asking of this congruence? 3x uh, is congruent to 4 mod 7. We had found earlier that negative 2 is an inverse of 3 mod 7. So we'll multiply both sides by negative 2. And this next line, I, I show that this negative 6, as we get over here, that's congruent to 1 mod 7. So that whole thing becomes a 1. And negative 2 times 4 gives us negative 8, which is congruent to 6 mod 7. So we get x is congruent to 6 mod 7. We could just as easily and correctly say x is congruent to negative 8. Indeed, it's congruent to all numbers that are equal, that are congruent to 6 mod 7. All right, we want to show that x is congruent to 6 mod 7 is a solution to that congruence. So we'll start with the proposed solution. And then we'll see if we can get the original congruence back. What we do is we're going to multiply both sides of the um, of our proposed solution by 3 to get 3x is congruent to 3 times 6. But that equals 18. And 18 is congruent to 4 mod 7. We show that all x that are congruent to 6 mod 7 satisfy our congruence. And that is how we find inverses and then use inverses to solve linear congruences.